When a router forms an adjacency with another router, it goes through several states. The routers progress through these states as they learn more about each other. The first state is down. This means that an OSPF enabled link is up, but no hello messages have been received by a neighbor yet. This is basically where the whole process starts. We might also see a router in this state if something is wrong. For example, neighbors coming up, then immediately dropping like we saw a moment ago. Next, you might see a state called attempt. This only applies to routers with the NBMA network type, so it's not something you will really need to know for the CCNA. Just be aware that it exists. This is where a router has sent a unicast hello packet to an adjacent router. Remember that hellos are usually multicast, but it hasn't seen hello packets from these routers yet. The init state means that the hello packet has been received from an adjacent router. This router has introduced themselves and shared their router ID. The hello packet doesn't include our own router ID though. When a router sends hello messages, it includes a list of all router IDs of all neighboring routers. That means that eventually a router should see its own router ID in a hello packet from an adjacent router. So this state means that communication has started, but it's not bi-directional yet. The two-way state means that bi-directional communication has been established. Each router has sent hellos, and each router has seen their own router ID in the hello message. Once routers are at this point, they've done their checks and are happy to be neighbors. For a broadcast network, this is where DR and BDR elections take place. Any routers that are DR others will not move past this state. Unless, of course, a DR or BDR fails and they get promoted. The two-way state is a key milestone in this process. The routers are essentially neighbors at this point. Now the routers need to start sharing topology information. In the X start state, one router in each network segment is chosen to be the master. This is the router with the highest router ID, which is not necessarily the DR. The master router is the one that gets to talk first. It initiates the exchange of routing information. It's in charge of synchronizing databases with other routers. The exchange state is where neighbors exchange DBD packets. Remember, these contain LSA headers, which are summary information about the network. The point of this is to find out if either router has missing records from its database. It's likely that there will be some updates required. The loading state is where the real database building happens. Based on the DBDs, the neighbors know what they need to know more about. They will then send LSRs and LSUs to request and share network information. The goal, of course, is to synchronize their databases. Once the databases are up to date, they can then run the SPF algorithm and find the best paths through the network. And finally, the full state. This is where the adjacency is complete and the databases are synchronized. This is the other state that we would expect healthy routers to be in. The other, of course, is two-way for DR other routers. Why don't we take a look at a router going through these states? For this, I'm going to use the debug IP OSPF command. In particular, we're looking at adjacencies. Don't forget, if you're connected with Telnet or SSH, you will need the terminal monitor command to see the logs. This is not required when we're on the console. So now I'm going to configure OSPF on this router. The router it connects to is already configured. Router OSPF 10 starts the process and the network command enables OSPF on an interface. First, we see the interface come up within the OSPF process, then a ton of messages. If we look back through the logs, we see the DR and BDR election. That happens during the two-way state. There's the X start state, where the other router is chosen to be the master. Then the exchange state, where DBDs are going back and forth. This is followed by LSRs and LSUs being used to build the OSPF database. Remember, that's the loading state. And finally, it transitions from loading to full. The process has finished. Of course, we should always remember to turn off the debugs when we're done. Now we can see if you've been paying attention. We have a few problems here, which you should be able to work out by looking at the output. Can you answer these questions? 
For the lab, you need to configure OSPF through this topology. The basic IP addressing is already done. You just need to do the OSPF parts. That includes setting up the router IDs based on loopback interfaces. You'll know you're done when every network is reachable from every other network. If you get through that, try disabling DR elections between R1 and R2. Also, between R2, R3 and R4, change R4 to be the DR and R3 to be the BDR. We haven't finished looking into OSPF yet. We've got one more video coming where we look at the routes that OSPF learns. In particular, how OSPF makes path decisions and how we can manipulate them.